Welcome to Margaret Speaks, a platform where ideas come alive, where we encourage one another. It is Friday. Thank God it's Friday. I'm so excited because so many great things are, are happening right now in spite of all the chaos that is going on. Remember, in the mess, a message will come about. In the struggle, the fruits will come about. So I just want to tell you guys that it's really a great time to be alive. Did she say that? Yeah, it is. Because in every adversity, there's opportunity for greatness and goodness to come about. As all this chaos is going on around the world, particularly here in America, I have hope. I'm so excited for what will be the end result of what is going on. People's lives would be better. Uh, black lives would matter more, now more than ever. Human beings' lives would matter now more than ever. Dignity will be given to every single human being because we're all God's children in this world doing the very best we can. I don't want to preach to you already, but I'm telling you, you need to get excited because I am for such a time as this. In the midst of every adversity, there is always an opportunity for greatness and good news. And this platform, Margaret Speaks, yes, one and only Oprah of Africa is a place where we give hope to the hopeless. We share information that will expand your mindset and let you understand nothing is too difficult for any of us to overcome. As a matter of fact, as much as things are happening, that a lot of us are like, where do I go from here? You should start thinking, oh, wow, is this an opportunity for me to be better and do differently than before? So for those of you that have been following the show, you know we're very progressive-minded in the things that we do. And I have a program for you today that is in line with what time it is, where we need to be going, how we need to be thinking. And I, I can't even think of someone who is better prepared and qualified, who has been in the field, in the trenches, here in Maryland and elsewhere and abroad, teaching people how to live financially well, but has crafted a concept how to live financially well in COVID-19. Think about it. Call your friends, call your sisters, your brother, tell them to log on and come and join us on Facebook Live on Media to Africa. Media to Africa is a platform that helps each, of, each and every one of us to connect with what matters. We shouldn't come together only when something is bad. We shouldn't come together where somebody dies. You know how some of us only want to come when something is bad. No. You see, my pain is your pain, even if you don't know, your gain is mine. So this platform would help to shift your thinking a little bit to let you understand that we're in this thing called life together. I am because you are. You are because I am. Even if you don't think that, just think about what I just shared with you. Let me get straight to the point. Just follow me in Margaret Speaks page on IG or Facebook, Margaret Speaks. Any of you that is listening to me and you're wondering, where do I go from here? Because I'm an optimist doesn't mean that things come to me easy, but I've made the conscious decision that for as long as I have breath in me, no challenge is too difficult for me. I want you to borrow that because you can borrow faith. You can borrow courage. That's what we're here to do with you. Without further ado, I know you guys are excited. I have someone here with me that I respect so dearly. He's a humble man of God, very simple, spirited, but very powerful and tough at the same time. And we have conversation. We are we're, we collaborate. He's a partner with, with, with Tati from all the way. I say all the way from Maryland. Yeah, that's where I am. So that's cool. cool. I want you guys to help me welcome um, a brother, Michael Elongo, to the to the, to Margaret's picture. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody listening to the show. <laughs> Thank you for being here with me. I'm very excited. I just want to get you to set the stage for this show today. Of course, you know what our topic is living financially well in COVID-19 because a lot of people right now have lost their jobs and you want to tell them how they're going to live financially well. I'm like, wait a minute, how am I going to live financially well if I don't have a job? A lot of people lost their businesses or things have dwindled and nothing. And a lot of hopelessness is going on amongst us. But we need people like you. I've followed your work. We're partners in so many business. We collaborate, we talk all the time because I love positive people, people who say, yes, we can. And I love you for that. So uh, and I knew when we put this topic together, I, in fact, it was a conversation we were having about some projects we we're working on. And you said, I said, I need you to come on my show because this is imperative to be talked about now. Can you set the stage for us by, first of all, giving a little bit of information? Because I know you're one of the humble people. You cannot hide in the background and do your work. People don't know how many degrees you have in this work and how much work you've done. Take a second. Take some time. Give us a bit of information about who you are, your background, and then set the stage 
for the conversation as a financial educator with University of Maryland College Park. My name is Michael Alonge. Um, I studied from, I'm a Cameroonian anyway, so I'm an African. So I studied okay. at State University of New York in Albany. I did psychology and economics. Um, but from New York to Maryland, I worked with the mm -hmm. Department of Human Services for a while. Actually, I started being a trainer for the Department of Human Services, teaching social workers. Yes. From there, mm -hmm. I joined the University of Maryland. And uh, this is my 10 year. And uh, Doc, as you know, the university system, to stay yeah. in the university, you have to be tenured. So mm -hmm. I had my tenure and five congratulations years ago. congratulations on that because you're tenured, right? Right. That's awesome. Congratulations. Great. That Thank you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that I should say any nonsense, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I know I, I had to get you laugh on this one, but again, so... Um, you know, it doesn't take much for me to crack up. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. Right. Thanks. So my work, I specialize so I'm with the University of Maryland, the College of Agriculture, the department, the extension department. So the College of Agriculture has... Um, academic, which are students on campus. You have pure research, farmers. Then you have other researchers in extension, which means mm -hmm. education and research. So mm -hmm. I'm one of those, and my field is in finance. So I am one of those people when there's a need in the community to teach finance, mm -hmm. I go, but all the teaching we do is about research. Mm -hmm. If we don't write, we don't publish, we're not doing any work. Sure. That is really, really, really great. I mean, I know because you're very humble and I appreciate you not blowing up who you are, you know, because um, if you have to do too much about who you are, then you're nobody. So I appreciate that. I want you now to set the foundation for the conversation today, which is living financially well in COVID-19. What does psychology got to do with finance and what is financial educator? Just set the stage about what that is and then, then let's tie it into the conversation for today. So the, the whole concept about being a financial educator is simple. It's just like an individual counting the money home, thinking mm -hmm. on how much they're going to spend today, if they're going to mm -hmm. save some of the money or they're going to lavish everything. So the educator is just um, there to help when there's situation. But mm -hmm. the approach with the with, uh, University of Maryland College Park is that we go into community, we see some of this situation before they really come in. And you, mm -hmm. you yourself know that's the purpose of research. So, sure. so sure. Um, the one thing we should remember, though, we did with COVID, as compared to 2008, when we had the financial crisis, right. here is the entire economy which has been hit probably day to day, almost at the same time in mm -hmm. different venues. As compared to the financial crisis that started with Wall Street, um, things collapsing, uh, uh, financial mishap and all those stuff, banks breaking down. But this mm -hmm. is an illness. This is something. Uh, I don't know, maybe you call this better for me, but this is some sort of, health wellness that break mm -hmm. into some ca major catastrophe that breaks Nobody saw it coming. Down. Nobody saw right. it coming. Right. Nobody saw it coming. And well, maybe some people did, but we, we didn't know what was going on, right? <laughs> no, we didn't. We didn't see it. Mm -hmm. Imagine you're in the office the next day, they call, they call you and you hear you can't yeah. go back to the office because yeah. everywhere is closed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So in economy, so in the way the economy functions is that it's me, you, and everybody that makes this economy operate. Mm -hmm. And then you and your business that we are watching and listening to right now and other, mm -hmm. other businesses depends mm -hmm. on the individual. So they produce, we buy, be it services, be it goods. So when it comes to the point that one either the firm is seriously ill, there's no wellness. We defend financial wellness is not existing in the business sector. Individuals and families, they are in bad shape. So mm -hmm. we are all operating 
And in, a, in basic economics, they call this the visual circle of economics, or the mm -hmm. economic flow. So money moves from businesses to individuals. So we put mm -hmm. our money in banks. Banks take this money, they invest on it, and pay interest to the, to the banks, and individuals who loan the money are paying interest to the banks, and the banks are giving us, some people call it chicken change, the banks are giving us back as interest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Getting, the bottom line is that we are getting something. It's better than putting this money under the pillow yeah. at home. Under the mattress. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the economy moves just like that. So if individuals and family have financial difficulties, businesses obviously are going to have financial difficulties. If so can you, before you continue, though, I need to I need to pause and ask you this because right now you and I know for a fact that a lot of individuals are having financial difficulty for such a time as like this. In addition to uh, businesses, so what does that mean in relation to the topic for today? Uh, I don't. Want, we will talk about it maybe once we get through the, the commercial break. But just before we do that. What does that what does that mean? What does that look like? Because I, even for me, I'm looking at you like, what does that mean? Can you expatiate what that means? Because somebody listening, watching us, okay, so you just said it and you want to move on. What does that mean? I don't understand. Can you so explain it where people like me can understand and I can utilize information for my good? Maybe yeah. I'll summarize. The best way to answer that question is to summarize it in the form of economics. So okay. we talk about something basic all the time, scarcity, choice, mm -hmm. and cost, opportunity okay. cost. So mm -hmm. when things are scarce, from money, from the goods going to, to the store to look for toilet rolls or toilet tissue or for looking for water, when things are scarce the way they are now, the, the most important thing that we have to do like individuals and our families to make great choices and mm -hmm. when we make choice choice is decision making in economics you can study study your first probably three years in bachelor's program what they are teaching you is how to make good decisions so mm -hmm. choice is decision making and if you can remember i think it's um it's um I, it, it, it wasn't um Barack Obama, I think it was Bill Clinton who said it, that the states are not like the government. When the government is broke, what does the government do? Prints money. Mm -hmm. When states are broke, they are broke. Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. states are broke, individuals working for the states, they are broke as well. So mm -hmm. that is what one. So that is a so, basic. So what do the individual? We're going to take a commercial break, though. Let, let's hold that up because I care more for the individual well-being right now. A lot right. of people are hurting. The government can solve all the problems, even if they think that they are. They're doing as much as they think they can. But I, I want us to take a quick commercial break. Uh, this is about the census because numbers matter. When we come back from this commercial break. We're going to take it from there and then let's delve into it and see if we can answer the question for the individuals. Hi, my name is Itayana Shasval. Family and community are very important to me. That's why today I want to talk to you about the 2020 census and why it's important to help ensure a complete and accurate count of everyone living in the United States and particularly in our community. Responding to the census helps allocate funding for our schools and public resources such as parks, hospitals, and fire departments. It helps identify where childcare centers are built, where roads are built, where new businesses are open, or how many congressional seats our district gets. The data collected will further affect our nation's ability to ensure equal representation to important governmental and private sector resources for everyone. Responding to the 2020 Census allows us to shape our community's future. It is easy to respond online, by phone, or by requesting a physical form of the Census. Our responses are safe, confidential, and protected by federal law. So let's get together for the 2020 Census, because our future and our children's future depend on it. I count. Hi, 
My name is Aina. Sister, because people who complain remain. It's a time to be active. You can do something. Everyone can do something. The information we're sharing here today, if you pay attention, you're, the goal is not for you to absorb everything. It could be just one new word that you hear that can help you bridge that next gap in your life. Perhaps you're feeling sorry for yourself, like life will hate you, people. To be honest with you, if nobody hates you, you're not going anywhere. If nobody is against you, then you can't stand for anything. So don't let that deter you. Don't let discourage, don't let that discourage you. If you haven't been inventing things or creating, if I tell you guys, I had a conversation with somebody yesterday. I told them that for such a time as this, I'm prospering because prosperity is a mindset. When you have the right mindset in the midst of the storm, you will prosper no matter what else is going on around you. So I don't want to be the one. I want to quickly bring back uh, our guest, the special guest today, uh, Michael Elonge, who is there in the trenches in the corridors of Baltimore and beyond on the state and the local level doing work on financial literacy. But we today are particularly are talking about how can you do that now that some people don't even have money. So Michael, welcome back to the show. I, I Before we took the commercial break, we were having the conversation and you were talking a little bit professorial and I'm like, okay, no, I need to bring you back to the common people like myself who understand only one, two, three, four. I don't tell me the other way around, right? So keep it basic for us so we can follow. So I want you to talk to us, and I'm hearing people say, but what a minute, how do I, now you did the state, the, the, the federal government, the state, and this. Now let's focus on the individual. There are the people watching this show now who can watch it a little later on uh, YouTube and what, what have you, and they don't really have it. How can you live financially, well in COVID-19 if you don't have two cents to rub together or you do have some but you're not making some sound decision because for me decisive decision is the key to success if you can please take it back and take it up from there Michael welcome back to the show thank you so, so what what I will first say is that um, to the listeners please write down this basic um, concept I'm gonna which, write. Which, which you okay, know I'm gonna... and, uh, which you know I know you know <laughs> when there's okay. scarcity, mm -hmm. which means scarcity in general, not enough mm -hmm. money, not, mm -hmm. a, not, not enough goods and services, mm -hmm. nothing is available enough, mm -hmm. you have to make mm -hmm. choices. Mm -hmm. When you make choices, you want to sit down and really take time to decide. So mm -hmm. choice is decision making. How am I, how much money do I still have in my account? I, is my business or my employment gone completely? If that is what it is, what are additional resources out there that can help me when I'm making this decision? Now, most of the listeners may not know, the government has a lot of resources. States have a lot of resources from mm -hmm. those paying rents to those paying mortgage. And most of you know that if you even fall back with your mortgage, yeah, the, your mortgage servicer cannot get you out of that property because that is what the state says and that's what the federal government says. You got to mm -hmm. be there. So there are options. Yes. So when you look at your choices, now mm -hmm. you got to decide then how to budget mm -hmm. whatever amount of money that is left. Now, but when it comes to budgeting, we are talking about two things here. Okay, well, before you continue, because uh, that's another story. We were going to do a program at our last convention uh, called, uh, you know, uh, people, uh, women know your nine numbers. That's another thing. But I have a question that somebody may be asking, <clears throat> or maybe just me. You, you talked about resources. I'm a business consultant uh, for, um, for another county on the concept of uh, business retention and expansion. And what I'm finding is, as I'm talking to those struggling businesses, I'm realizing that some of them don't know all about the resources that are out there and they're crying wolf. And I'm the one pointing them to the resources on where they need to go and how to. But most people are sitting complaining. Do you have any particular, or if not, we can share that a little later, any resource avenue that you can share with our viewers where they can go, whether pertaining to their mortgage or where they can get some kind of help that you're aware of that you that is kind of something you can share right now. If not, we can get it to the people who are interested a little later. 
because that's important. A lot of people yes. do not know the kind of assistance that are there for them. That's that's very important. The best the best way to start is that look at your governor's office, the website. Every of this website, among I think everyone that I've looked into, they have information about COVID nineteen, mm -hmm. how to help and how to go through it. Now Maryland mm -hmm. made me to add attracted me to look at this because, you know, the governor of Maryland is the head of mm -hmm. the governor's, um, how you call yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, the nationwide. Right, mm -hmm. nationwide. Okay, so mm -hmm. so these governors met and they, they are helping. So most of them are not only waiting for the decision from the federal government. So yeah. most of them have already and have already put, they put things in place three months ago. Mm -hmm. Some are mm -hmm. still active. So no matter the financial difficulties that we may be facing, if you go to that website, you'll see help. There's a help, help button that gives you the option to be able mm -hmm. to, and there are phone numbers that you can call to mm -hmm. talk directly with someone to help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so are you saying to me that, because you have no idea how many people are actually very despondent, and because people don't even know the fear of what is happening could be worse than what is actually happening. So are you saying by going to the individual states or localities website, they should be able to find some kind of resources that can help them with whatever kind of need they have? And that's part of that, how you are living financially well in COVID-19. Is that accurate? Right. There's abundant a wealth of resources. Now, the question that most people ask, because I received calls in Maryland, people calling me that, mm -hmm. um, Michael, um, this, this, this resource, are they really, really meeting up with what they are providing? My mm -hmm. reply is that never you be disappointed. Check. Make sure you yeah. call. Make sure you mm -hmm. try. Don't, don't sit down. Don't talk yourself out of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. make sure. You know, mm -hmm. make sure you get the right information and where to find what you want. Because basically, mm -hmm. um, almost I seen I looked at New York, I look at uh, Maryland, I looked at um, um, Illinois. You know, they all have this information. So people in Atlanta, people in New York, people in uh, I'm looking at where the major cities. You know, and even some of the locality, the local government, they do have services, additional services that they do provide. <laughs> if I don't move out of this house, you're going to make me start contributing for the rent. So I better get my own home. So you mm -hmm. need to plan for your home. So you plan for a place to live. You plan for the, so you plan for your rent. Or if you're lucky, you're going to buy a home and she's going to, auntie going to let you stay till you invest in a home. So you plan on getting a home. So you already have this plan in mind. And so we have something in economics which I call game theory all the time. So you, you, you're planning, but you're playing a game. This is a financial game you're playing. You can, if Michael, Michael, this is a 30-minute show. We, 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 you're going to have to come back because I need to come to your class, okay? I need to. We need to do this again. But I want you to go ahead and finish what you're trying to say, because there's so much more that people can learn. And so you can tie this up for us and hand it to everyone that had the guts to watch us here about how they can with the very bare minimum. And the great news is you even say you can do it without money. So what is our excuse? So I want you to take a second, finish your thought, and then give us a summary what do you want to do by point, one, two, three, four, but whatever, on how we can authentically and organically begin to live financially well with little or nothing and have hope that tomorrow will be better. Thank you. You want me to go ahead to continue? Yeah. All right, thanks. I thought there was yeah. another break. I'm sorry. No, okay, we're so, not taking more break. We're almost right. done. Just go ahead. You just got so, me going. So, this is this so, so is this, very this, this are some these are some of the things we do. First, you get your income. With the income, no matter how much it takes, you cannot consume all your income. You you the the planning, the budgeting with the income for consumption, you playing a game again. How much can I spend and how much can I save? 
That is very important because if you consume all that income and you are not saving, when a rainy day or problem occur, that is where you get yourself involved with debt. Looking for money, which is not yours, and then that money keep building. Now, with that, you want to also look at what we call your credit report. A credit report is your life history, your financial life history. And almost every state, you have the freedom to apply from any of the credit bureaus, which are, uh, you have TransUnion, you have Equifax, and you have Experian. So all these three of them, you can get them all from one website called annual credit, annualcreditreport.com. So you can get that. Now that tells is you that about free? Is that free? Free. Is that free? Right. Yeah, the, the first, I think we are allowed federally, I think the federal law allows everybody to get the first two copies free or something like that. And then there's a trick because almost 90% of the time, one bureau is reporting something similar from the other bureau. So what I used to do, the first three months I'll pull from Equifax, the first three months I'll request from TransUnion, the, the next three months I'll, I'll take from Experian. So you can you can be mm-hmm. checking because you never know what is in your report that may be holding you back. That's exactly. in other words, it is about being uh, uh, proactive in your life because money is is about the actions or series of decisions we're making, right? Because right. And, and we're going to bring this show to a close very quickly. But here is what I'm I'm seeing that when this COVID nineteen happened, there are lots of people who are making seventy thousand, hundred thousand but it didn't even take two weeks for them to be out of money. So it is, isn't that, uh, and this is not in judgment, but in wonderment as okay. to how is that possible if those people or individuals have been living financially well or the decision. that I think we may have to do another segment on where we just talk about that because that's something we, we need to understand and that's what we've been teaching our kids. It's not how much you make, it's how the lifestyle you live and the choices you make with your, your money. And then you cannot live paycheck to paycheck because if you do that, when life happens, just like COVID-19, you find yourself on the street unexpectedly. I need you to take 30 minutes if you want. And just let's bring it to a close because we're like about almost five, seven minutes over. But I'm loving this. I'm learning a lot myself. We would love to bring you back again to continue if we so choose. So Michael, take 30 seconds and, and bring this to um, a close. I can give uh, a closing remarks. Before we leave, the the last thing I want to mention, probably two things very quick. You also want to be careful about your identity and identity theft. So Mm. you want to take time and make sure that when you go to a bank, you're using your small money. You may think that this is the smallest you have, but to some people, this is a major and they are eyeing how to get that. So um, Mm. as we're protecting ourselves from COVID, you want to protect yourself from your little money or the small money that we all have. And the last Mm -hmm. one is you want to weigh your assets and liabilities. Now, uh, most people will say, but what's that? Your asset actually is everything. I got got two cents in my mouth. What asset? I got more liabilities than asset. How do I live financially? Well, that's what I want to (laughs) know. Doctor, go take all those high heel shoes, put them out for garage sale. So, that's, so, a great, that's a great so, idea. Some so of the jokes you have. Those things are assets. Liability exactly. are things we owe. So at every time we want to be thinking, do we really owe more than what we have? Mm-hmm. So all our debt that we owe, we want to take them into perspective and want to make sure that whatever we have to spend, we are spending based on scarcity, mm-hmm. choice, an opportunity cost. There's mm-hmm. a cost for everything. If you want to go, if you want to go buy the how you call that bags, Gucci bags, or how you call them, and instead of living with an ordinary bag that nobody cares, it's Michael, I told you we're gonna do this again. That's another story for another day. That is living to impress people who don't even give a rat about your life. Really, if your father don't have any investment in there, forget it. You know because. 
Some people even do that just to impress other people. The person you're trying to impress is struggling with his or her own life. If you have to see me and then you bring your bag like this, I can see you, you, you got a problem because the bag is not who you are, right? Your identity has nothing to do with what you're wearing. It's all good and dandy, especially if you can afford it. Who are you trying to impress? If you got impressed me, you got something that's coming. Michael, it has been really a great pleasure. Well, doctor, have... before you go, finish this word for me. A penny save is what? Oh, I forgot what the answer. Whatever. Yeah, no. We said that when we were kids. Yes, it's right. We have, have, what that's, is... that's, that's my closure I got to give everybody listening to okay, this. Okay, please. I, I can't remember the completion. Yeah. Go no, ahead. No money, is is too that... small. no money is too small to save. Thank I'm you. I'm telling you. Uh, it is so poignant at such a time as this. As people are looking outwardly, the solution to their lives is in work. And I'm telling you the truth. I've been there and done that. I'm telling you the truth. Stop thinking everything is against you. If you take a look within, whether you need to downsize whatever your car, whether you need to forget about the friends who are not adding value to your life so you can live authentically, so you can spend more time writing books, that's financially well. I have a book coming out called 11 Keys, uh, 11 Keys to Find the Seed of um, seed of Opportunity in Every Adversity. That should be out this month. So I'm, I'm being financially sound because this is the time for that. We're here to tell you that any idea you have that is good, you can turn it into something positive. If you have a closet that you can't even get your leg into, go on, Amazon has a place to shop, create a shop so you can sell them off. You'll be amazed how $10, $20 can add up. That's how you're going to live financially well at such a time like this. The greatest news is that if you begin those positive, constructive financial characteristic attitude or concept or doing or being, by the time COVID-19 is over, you find, you find out that you have a new lease on life on how you should have been living in the first place. So this is just a tidbit of how we should. Conversation begets conversation. The goal of this um, um, show, Margaret Speaks, the Oprah of Africa, the only one that I know, y'all, is just to get you thinking, to provoke your mindset, to let you know you cannot be the way you've always been, that you need to think about what you're thinking about. Don't just be the exact same way you were when you woke up yesterday because it's a new day. Heck no, don't wait for it to be over. Because guess what? When this whole COVID thing is over, it will not be business as usual. There are going to be two kinds of people that will show up, that will emerge in the society. Those who are going to come out and say, oh my God, where do I go from here? I don't want to know you if you're one of those people. Or the one that's going to come and say, hey, yeah, I go. That's what I've been doing. I'm building wealth. I'm changing lives. I'm helping poor people. I'm doing great things. Black life matters. Every life matters. You are the person that we're talking to right now. It's going to come from the small little change that you're going to make in your life. Every little change, whether in cash or in character or personality, will add up to important, important narratives somewhere along the line. So this is Margaret Durecki, one and only ambassador. I, I earned it, y'all, so don't hit congratulate. So the point of the matter is, when we come together for such a time as like this, don't look at people and judge anyone. We're all in this thing called life together. Let's be each other's keeper. There is enough for all of us. If we can create wealth, we can build wealth together as one another. Believe you me, when you when you split my blood and any other blood, they are the exact same color. The fact that my pigmentation may be seemingly different doesn't make my needs and my wants any different or I'm, I'm deserving less. And that's why I say to you, for all those people who have been following uh, the George Floyd, there are different necks that go on people's necks on daily basis. Which one is on your neck? Perhaps are you the one twisting your leg to put it on your own neck? Oftentimes, we may be our own worst enemy, right? But sometimes it could be the one society is placing on you that you can do something about. So let's get off on our necks. Or whoever is in your neck, push him out in the name of George Floyd because his death is symbolic of who we should be, what we should stand for, and the way we should go forward. To know that in the midst of the adversity, something great will come. He's a symbol as to what is going to come, including how we're going to live financially well going forward, not just in COVID or post-COVID. Until next time, follow Margaret Speaks page on IG or email me at margaret at margaretspeaks.com. We're going to bring Brother Michael again because this conversation is important. Because if you don't know your numbers, you cannot live well. Until next time, everyone, check me out at margaretspeaks.com. Margaret Speaks, empowerment to where ideas come alive and where we change minds in the right direction. 
Thank you so much. Go and have some happy hour in, yeah, in your house. Happy hour. Today's Friday. Happy hour when you celebrate being alive and take care of those who are, can help themselves and pray for those who pass. May their souls raise in perfect peace. All right, y'all. See you guys. And we say with Tati Power. That's my other business. Bye. See you guys next week. And tell a friend to come on and join us. 